Hey friends, welcome to Mad Mere Dye. Today I'll be making an X fold with a gradient pattern. After the shirt is folded, I take a ruler and I make a diagonal line from the center of the shirt up towards the shoulder and where the corner of the shirt meet. Then I fold it and I try to be very careful about keeping each fold the same size as the one before it. Also, there are four layers of fabric, so this part can get a little tricky when you get up towards the corner. Then I rubber band it off, and as I secure the other areas of the shirt with rubber bands, I also go through and make sure that all of the folds are the same as how they were folded from the center. Now, because it is four layers of fabric, it's not gonna be perfect, so just try your best. Also, if the shirt doesn't want to crease where there's a fold, I usually use my hemostat to just kind of draw a line. You can also use a chopstick or even those nail sticks that you use to push your cuticles back. On the side of the shirt where the sleeves are, I often find it can be a little bit trickier. So I usually rubber band the other side first and then come to this side where the shirt is already kind of in formation. So it just helps make it a little easier to keep the sleeve folds in line. Then I finish rubber binding it. Also, I have several different sizes of rubber binders for this. Then I go in with my liquid dye. Now for my liquid dye, I'm actually experimenting with uh, sodium alginate, which is a thickener, just to see how it affects saturation within the shirt. I'm doing a gradient pattern on the shirt and I chose colors that kind of resemble a Florida sunset. I just really love these colors together. I love rainbows too, but this is a really nice gradient. I am also really fond of purple, so for the lines that are going in between the gradient, I am using a dark purple and a blue violet, which also goes really nice next to the black. You can still see the differences in color. On this side, I am reversing the gradient pattern on every other line and then going in with a darker color. And this just gives a really cool pattern. I am actually going to switch it up on the other side. Also, I have this sped up to 10 times as fast as it took me to make this. And also I cut out a lot of the parts where I was contemplating which color to do next. It's not the end of the world if you start with the wrong color on an end, but I do have dyslexia, so I have to be really careful. And a lot of times after I finish a line, I will just pause for a few seconds to make sure that I'm going in with the correct color. You may notice that the pattern on this half of it, I put some gradients right next to each other. I find I get a really cool effect when I do that and when you open it up it just it looks super cool and it just it blends really well. And then I broke up the pattern a little bit as we got towards the end and that will also give it a different pattern from the other side. Then I go in with some of my dark colors and I make sure that that's pretty saturated and I do rotate this a lot too to make sure I didn't miss any spots, especially on the sides. Once I'm done on this side, I take another wrap and I carefully flip it going in the other direction. Now, I do like to put the same pattern on the back side. I find that it just turns out a lot better, especially because I'm going through four layers of fabric with the fold that it's in. This side usually goes a lot faster and I always start by marking out my lightest color so that I don't accidentally mix that up and then I just go back in following the gradient pattern going next to the colors that would line up in the pattern and after that I'll go in with my dark colors and fill in all of the gaps I'm also doing this side a little bit quicker because part of it is already saturated on the sides However, I do rotate it still so that I can make sure that I'm not missing any holes or anything like that. 
With the sodium alginate that I am trying out as a thickener, the dye is behaving so nice. I am a little concerned about the saturation level though because some of the dye is sitting on top of the shirt. Once I'm done, I cover it with plastic and I wrap it up kind of like a little tie-dye burrito and I gently rubber band on a couple rubber bands. This just helps keep the moisture in it. And then after it's sat for at least 24 hours, this might take out the rubber bands after I've just kind of gently rinsed it in cold water. The colors look vibrant right now because they're wet, but I can already tell I need to use more dye next time, even with the thickener. The shirt still turned out pretty rad and I will still be putting it up for sale. Thanks for watching and hit that subscribe for more tie-dye adventures.